Cauliflower tastes like someone ate a dozen hard-boiled eggs, waited for an hour, farted into the dirt, then tended to that dirt lovingly for two months until it grew into a fart flower, harvested it on the hottest, ripest day of the year, boiled it for 13 hours, and then tried to fool people into thinking it tastes just like mashed potatoes. Well, when you put it that way, I actually like the taste of mashed cauliflower, but I know a lot of people don't. So what else can we use to make low carb mashed potatoes without using cauliflower or potatoes? Because if cauliflower can become anything, then maybe other things can too, like this onion or this egg. On my quest to find a better mashed potato replacement, I've turned to another tuber, the turnip. From the outside, a turnip looks nothing like a potato. It can be bitter after you cook it, especially the larger ones, so it's better to select the smaller ones. But if all you can find are these large ones, don't worry, I have some tricks on how to make these not so bitter, and it actually involves a potato. After you peel the outside of your turnips, dice them into small, uniform chunks. That way, they cook evenly. Add the diced turnips to a large pot, along with a half of a potato. Then pour in one cup of chicken broth and then just enough water to cover up the turnips. Season with a little bit of salt and bring this to a boil. We're gonna let this cook until they're softened or until a fork can easily pierce through them. Then you wanna drain off all the liquid and that half a potato, it gets tossed. You might be wondering why, 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 why the potato? Well, I looked it up on some how-to website and apparently the potato helps absorb any sort of bitterness that's released during the cooking of the turnips. I even tested this when as far as to making a batch of mashed turnips with the potato and a batch without, and it really does help. So add a potato. Return the turnips to the pan and let's cook off any of that remaining moisture. This is also supposed to help make sure that all that residual bitterness is gone, which I actually tested this too, and it does work. Then add all the cooked turnips to a blender or food processor, along with three tablespoons of butter, a quarter cup of heavy cream, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Then you're gonna blend this until it's pureed. It's important to taste the mashed turnips to see if they need any more salt and if they're still bitter. I didn't find mine bitter at all, especially because I use smaller turnips. But if you do find yours bitter, then you can just add a little bit more butter or heavy cream. The fat counteracts any of that bitterness. Another tuber replacement for the potato is a rutabaga, which looks very similar to a turnip, but it's more yellow inside and a little bit larger. We're gonna make this very similar to our mashed turnips, except for one change. Again, we peel and dice. Fun fact, I used to think that a rutabaga was a car, and then I realized I was getting that confused with the Studebaker. They're not even the same word, but somehow I thought that they were the same thing. They don't even sound alike. Let's do that potato trick again, then add in the broth, a little bit more water, and let this boil until it's softened. Remove it from the heat, drain off any of that liquid, and then chuck the potato. And again, we're gonna try and get out any of that residual moisture from the rutabaga. Add the cooked rutabaga to a blender, along with butter and heavy cream. I found that the rutabaga is slightly more bitter than the turnip, so that fat and heavy cream helps to counteract that bitterness, but I did have to do one more thing to help, and that was to add a hint of sweetness. You can sprinkle in a tablespoon or two of sugar-free sweetness. This will help balance any of that bitter flavor. Add the pepper, puree until smooth, and you're left with a creamy mashed rutabaga that tastes just like mashed potatoes. Did you know that a potato has more potassium than a banana? So when you get leg cramps and someone offers you a banana for low electrolytes, they really should be offering you a potato instead. But if you're low carb, even better is if they offer you a packet of Element Electrolytes, who is my sponsor for this video. Element has a science-backed formula of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium. The potato might have more potassium, but it also has a lot of carbs. Element only has two grams of carbs per packet. Plus, Element is gonna give you more sodium and magnesium, two other essential electrolytes that are gonna help combat keto flu symptoms. It also comes in better flavors, like orange, raspberry, even chocolate. And a potato just comes in one flavor potato. You can drink Element electrolytes or use them in recipes like sauces and desserts. You can't really drink a potato. Plus, right now Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. It's a great way to try a bunch of their flavors free with any Element order. A potato wouldn't do that. I've never seen a potato offer you a bag of french fries 
with purchase or a couple of tater tots. Just go to drinkelement.com slash keto focus to get yours. So what about these, the onion and the egg? Can they be turned into a low carb mashed potato? There is someone who managed to turn in an egg into some low carb mashed potatoes and everyone in the carnivore community lost their marbles over them. Chris Cookie Nashville came up with this recipe earlier this year, so let's see what all this fuss is about. He starts with melting a whole stick of butter into a skillet over medium low heat. Now that's a lot of butter, but I'm going with it. He says that you want low heat because you don't want the eggs to scramble too quickly. He then pours in 32 ounces of egg whites. He adds a half a teaspoon of salt to help denature the protein in those egg whites, and then adds an eighth a teaspoon of garlic powder just for a fancy touch. Stir them over medium low heat and then break up the egg whites as they cook. You want to cook out all of the liquid. He says the liquid tastes like eggs so you want to make sure that it's completely cooked out. With cooking the scrambled egg whites it actually took a lot longer than I thought it would to cook them up. He actually doesn't say how long it took him to cook these scrambled egg whites but it ended up taking me 30 minutes to do. I actually ended up having to increase the heat to more of like a medium or a little bit higher than a medium just to help speed up the process. Once they're dry and crumbled, then we blend them. Then he adds in two ounces of cream cheese, two to three ounces of fresh mozzarella. Don't get the shredded stuff. He says that makes a difference. Then two tablespoons of sour cream and a teaspoon of grated Parmesan cheese. I think all this dairy is added in there to help kind of counteract any residual egg flavor. It's really a trick that a lot of us keto recipe developers do in order to get rid of that underlying eggy flavor in any recipes. Now his secret weapon that apparently makes it taste just like mashed potatoes is to add in some toasted beef gelatin, two teaspoons of that. He toasts in a dry skillet until it gets that golden color. Another thing I noticed with cooking these carnivore mashed potatoes is especially when it came to that toasted beef gelatin and he said that it does not smell very good or taste very good. I didn't try and taste it on its own, but he's right. It smells like a barnyard. And same with the scrambled eggs. When you're cooking up those scrambled egg whites, it smells like a barnyard. And then adds in a half a teaspoon of white pepper and then a tablespoon of regular beef gelatin. This is really just turning into the kitchen sink of mashed potatoes because everything's going in there. Then to help blend it, you can add a little bit of heavy cream. And one more thing he adds is one to two tablespoons of egg white protein powder. He says this is for flavor and then also for texture. Blend it again until it's mashed potato consistency. The texture I think is spot on. It actually made a lot. It made around four cups of mashed potatoes. The texture reminds me more of ricotta cheese I'm sure I could get it to thin out a little bit more if I added some more heavy cream. I always wonder how people come up with this stuff. Like, how did he decide to toast up beef gelatin or cook egg whites until they're that dried and then add a bunch of cheese and toss the gelatin in it? Was he cooking the egg whites one morning on the stove and then totally forgot about it and overcooked them? I'm not sure he ever said. The taste is magnificent. I'm really shocked at how much this does taste like mashed potatoes. It um, took me a while to figure out what it was that I was tasting that it reminded me of. It reminds me of, you know, when you're making deviled eggs and the yolk filling part, that's actually what it reminds me a lot of, even though we didn't include any egg yolks in here. But for somebody that trying to go with a very low carb version of mashed potatoes or they're on a carnivore diet, I think this is a really good option, especially since a half cup serving is less than two grams of carbs compared to the mashed turnip, which was around five carbs. Now this onion, I'm actually not gonna turn this into mashed potatoes because that would be cringe. But if you wanna see cringe, you must watch one of my first videos I ever made. It was on how to make mashed cauliflower. Just click right here.